March of 2020, we got the Series 12 finale of Doctor Who, The Timeless Children. Ten months and one pandemic later, Revolution of the Daleks, the, f the New Year's special released just yesterday, in fact, 1st of January 2021. Now, was it all I expected it to be? Well, half of it isn't what I expected, and the other half is. So it kind of balanced out. And I honestly think it was a pretty enjoyable episode, especially after the crummy year we've all had. I thought this cheered me up slightly. Now, I had my own idea of what I thought Revolution of the Daleks was going to be like. I, and even from the trailers, it kind of supported it. I mean, I thought the Doctor was going to be in prison for most of this episode. And that uh, it would be down to Ryan, Graham and Yaz to look after the planet. And Jack would turn up in order to help them out. But would once again narrowly miss the Doctor. That's what I thought this was going to be. But, honestly, that part had proven to be wrong. So, following on from the end of the previous season, the Doctor is in prison. She's been caught by the Jadoon and she's serving multiple life sentences. Now, one thing I love about the prison scenes is the minor details. I mean, I love a lot of the minor details throughout this story, but especially in the opening when the Doctor is in prison. And you see her... It would have been so easy for them to just put her in with a load of humanoid prisoners, but... They actually did dip into the Doctor Who costume box and managed to come up with some really creative stuff. With her sharing the prison with a weeping angel, an ood, a sycorax, a pating, and a member of the silence. And when she's talking to herself in prison, which, come on, the Doctor's in prison, you wouldn't expect them not to talk to themselves. And she sets about reading herself a bedtime story, and it's the opening of Harry Potter. I just thought... Yes, yes, that is exactly something the Doctor would do. I love that. Now, as I said, I thought that she would be in prison for most of the episode and it would be Jack helping them out, but I love that it's also Jack who frees her from prison, and th the opening where they finally escape is just so much fun. And I do love the kind of subtle nod they give to Utopia, with her saying, if you had work done, you can talk. <laughs> and that is brilliant. Now... Back on Earth, Yaz, Graham and Ryan have been trying to kind of protect the planets without the Doctor there. And they come across a video of the businessman they met in Arachnids in the UK, Jack Robertson. He is basically six hours after they defeated the Dalek in Resolution. It was due to be transported to GCHQ for filing and the like, but was intercepted. And basically, Jack plans to work with a politician named Joe Patterson, who she's become Prime Minister, and an, a man at another tech company named Leo Rugazi. And they plan to use the Dalek shells in order to build defence drones. And on the face of it, when you see the defence drones, it doesn't actually seem that bad. I mean, yes, there's still the Dalek shells, but they're controlled by AI. They blast water cannons and also tear gas where necessary. And you think, okay, they're doing the wrong thing, but they're doing it for the right reasons. You can understand why they're doing it, even if we know this is ultimately going to end badly, and it does, when Leo discovers organic components left inside the original shell and starts to experiment with that. In doing so, creating the mutant Daleks or have replicas of the mutants, which then, of course, are going to take over the AI, take over the Dalek bodies, and essentially destroy mankind. Now, that's the kind of half of the episode I wasn't really expecting. I mean, yeah, we saw the Daleks in the trailers, and we wondered, well, why they look like the reconnaissance Dalek from, from 2019. It does all fit together. Now, the parts that I was kind of expecting was uh, when this all starts going down, the Doctor basically says, I've got to do something and I really don't want to do it. And even Jack's like, no, no, you can't be serious. You can't really be thinking of this. And that's that they call in the proper Daleks, once properly from Scarrow, to come in and deal with them. Now, this is evidently a reference back to, in the 1980s, there was a string of episodes where the Daleks were essentially in the midst of a civil war. And this went across several Doctors, starting with the Fifth Doctor, with 
Resurrection of the Daleks, going through the Sixth Doctor with Revelation of the Daleks, and then ultimately ending with the Seventh Doctor in Remembrance of the Daleks. To which Revolution kind of fits, though, that particular title frame. And this is more what I was expecting. We have Daleks, proper Daleks coming in from Scarrow, dealing with the Dalek drones that have been created, and ultimately finding a way to... Well, basically destroying their counterparts because they see these Daleks as impure, and then the Doctor and her friends having to try and work out a way in order to deal with the fact that there are now proper Daleks on Earth. And while Joe Pat, while spoiler alert, of course, Joe Patterson and Leo Rugatti both end up dying, Jack Robertson, once again here, is the asshole that he was before, but... When he tried to ally himself with the Daleks, I was thinking to myself, oh god, he's going to get himself killed. This is going to be like evolution of the Daleks, where he tries to talk to them, and then they just exterminate him on the spot. But then when he was actually on the Dalek ship, I was like, oh, oh no. But he's going to end up like Rickson Slade, isn't he? He's going to be the asshole who survives this. And yeah, he does end up. And I have a feeling he's going to end up being a thorn in the Doctor's side for a very long time. Especially since at the end of the episode, they're hinting at a political resurgence for him. <laughs> Boy, he's going to be fun to see show up. I also love that at the end, while we don't get to see you know, the Doctor and Jack say goodbye to each other, Jack just kind of disappears, they show a telephone call with him at the end, and he mentions that he's reunited with Gwen Cooper, he's met her son, and everything seems to be going really well. And I do like that they reference back to Torchwood, considering that was the last time we actually saw Jack before he returned in Fugitive of the Jadoon. I do love that they mention that with him, and as I said, I do love the minor details with him, especially when he mentions, when he's talking about how he's immortal, and then he mentions Rose because of it, and when he tells them where she ended up, she's stuck in a parallel universe, or a parallel Earth, and yeah, it's just like, really? Because they show her kind of being unsure throughout the entire thing. But I do love that. Now, of course, the big moment at the end is the departure of Ryan and Graham. And R Ryan had a moment in the middle of the episode with the Doctor, and I do love them that they actually acknowledge that, yes, the Timeless Children canon does still count, and that the Doctor's still unsure about herself. I love that she was able to have that moment with Ryan to sit down and talk it through. And when it ultimately comes to Ryan and Graham's departure at the end, I do love once again that it's ultimately Ryan who is choosing to go home. While Graham is prepared, seemingly prepared at first to stay on for more adventures, Ryan says he is done. He he says that he's, he's met his friends, he's met up with his dad again, and it, planet Earth needs him for a while. I, I, I like that. I had it in my head for a while that Graham was going to die and then ultimately Ryan was going to leave out of grief or something like that. But I do love that the ending that they did give, that Ryan chooses to stay and Graham ultimately decides, yeah, I'm going to stay behind to look after him. But I do like it. it's a bit more like Martha's exit as opposed to Rose's. I mean, with Rose's and with a lot of other companions in you who is that they're torn away from the Doctor and there's some reason why they can't ever see him again, yada, yada, yada. You, you get the idea. But I do love that this one is more like Martha's. I Look, we're stepping down because we want to step down, but who knows, we might see you again sometime. And you know what, if Ryan and Graham would show up again, I, I think I'd accept that. I think, yeah, just to, be, just to be able to see the two of them again, that still remains a possibility. And while people might think it's a bit sickly sweet, I love that they ended where they began with those two. With Ryan, once with both of them up up on the hill once again, and Ryan still learning how to ride a bike. I love that his dyspraxia wasn't just immediately cured because of all his travels with the Doctor. He do he is still working on himself, and to be honest, I think that's a great message. That even if you have a load of great stuff in your life, even you, if you have problems, you can still keep working on them. They're not there's no easy fix, but yeah you can still work on them and do well. And hell, the Doctor even leaves both of them with a gift, that being, of course, the psychic uh, replicas of the psychic paper, which implies that they may be going on more adventures kind of without the Doctor. I believe that there's... I can't remember what the other one is, but they said that there's something going on in Korea, which, yeah, I think it would be nice to know that the two of them are off having adventures. 
The only one hanging plot thread that I admit I'm kind of on the fence about is the Doctor and Jack escape from prison, yet won't Mordidoon or other law enforcement agencies still be trying to come and pick the Doctor up? I feel that needs to be brought up at some point, that the Doctor is now effectively on the run. That she broke out of a life sentence. Surely there are going to be people who want to bring her back. I mentioned that might be a plot point later on. But, hey, Series 13 is coming up. They say they're going to uh, show it once it's finished. Like, they're not going to wait. They're going to finish it up and then show it pretty much straight away. I'd love that to happen. We got Jodie Whittaker coming back as the Doctor, yes. Uh, Mandip Gill is still on board as Yaz, that's great. And supposedly they're introduce, going to introduce a possible new companion named Dan, played by John Bishop. That'll be interesting to see, but after the crummy year we've all had, I think Revolution of the Daleks is a great way to start off 2021. Is it perfect? Probably not, but you know what? We needed it. So you know what? There are my thoughts on Revolution of the Daleks. Anyway, can't wait for series 13. I'll let you know uh, how I'm doing with my classic episode. I do have one coming up, hopefully soon enough. But until then, see ya.